Okay, dear conference participants, today we are starting our second day of Collins 2022 conference, uh, completely uh, dedicated to intelligent systems. Uh, we have a lot of work to do today, and I will ask you uh, politely to limit your presentation to 10 minutes or maximum 15 minutes time. Uh, so uh, our first uh, speaker today is, uh, according to program, is Roman Polishak or Ivan Polishak, and, and uh, text tonality classification using a hybrid convolutional neural network with parallel and sequential connection between layers. So please uh, proceed. Good morning. Do you see my screen? Yes. Okay, thank you. Uh, I want to present uh, the article Text Tonality Classification Using a Hybrid Convolutional Neural Network with Parallel and Sequential Connections Between Lawyers. The analysis of the tonality of texts is an urgent problem in the field of natural language processing, uh, which is often solved with the help of convolutional neural networks. However, most of these uh, CNN's models uh, focus only on the study of uh, local function ignoring global futures. In this paper, a hybrid uh, convolutional neural network with parallel sequential connections is proposed for the analysis of text tonality. The proposed uh, hybrid convolutional neural network extracts uh, text futures using a parallel connected convolutional block. Uh, then the neural network classifies the futures and combines these futures with the original text futures. Text classification is uh, widely used in tonal analysis, stock market analysis uh, for automated email responses. Methods based on in the depth uh, learning of neural networks have become current practice along with uh, classical algorithms for text mining. Document classification is a process of assigning documents to a certain category depending on their content. Text classification is necessary to solve the following tasks. Personification in advertising, sites uh, division by the thematic catalogs, uh, fighting against deceptive or misleading advertising correspondence, and uh, text tone recognition. The aim of this work is to develop a new model of the architecture of a convolutional neural network with parallel and sequential connections between lawyers to classify the tonality of text with uh, increased efficiency. Uh, the problem of classification of textual information is formulated as follows. Uh, let there uh, be a finite uh, number of classes in category and uh, a finite set of documents and the known target function f, which determines the correspondence for each pair, document and class. The task is to find uh, the function f0, which is as uh, close as possible to the objective function f, that is a minimum rate uh, provided in Euclidean space. Function f0 is called a classifier. Text tonality is understood as uh, the emotional vocabulary and emotional assessment given by the author in relation to the object. The analysis of the text tonality is of great, uh, great practical importance. Quality evaluation of goods and services based on users' feedback of internet resource and prevention of extremism and terrorism, analysis of uh, stock markets and forecasting the variability of financial assets. The main task uh, of the tonality analysis is to identify ideas in the text and determine their properties. Opinions are of two types, opinion uh, comparison and uh, direct opinion. Direct opinion contains the author's statement about the object. The formal opinion definition is described as a tuple of four elements, orientational or polar assessment of tonality, entity object or future object of tonality and their properties, the time when the opinion was sent and subject of tonality. 
The architecture of a new hybrid convolutional neural network consists of convolutional neural network block with parallel and serial connection between lawyers and a maximum pooling lawyer, which obtained from the matrix of the original text. You can use different cores to convolve uh, a sentence and uh, to obtain different futures in the proposed convolutional neural network. The mind futures are combined with the matrix of maximum pooling uh, obtained from X0 with the help of convolutional neural network block. These futures are classified using the MLP classifier. The text uh, X0 is uh, entered as uh, at the input of the branched convolutional neural network. This neural network uh, consists of two parts a block of convolutional neural network with parallel and sequential connection between lawyers and a maximum pooling lawyer. The block of the convolutional neural network consists of lawyers with different window size, which are connected in parallel along to the columns and sequential along the rows of the structure. Uh, the input of each convolutional lawyer in the column consists of the sum uh, of the outputs of all previous lawyers. A parallel text matrix is applied to uh, the entrance of uh, convoluted lawyers with dimensions 5D, 4D, 3D, and 2D. Uh, to classify, uh, sorry. Uh, to classify the text tonality, we will use the average general futures, which can be obtained uh, by combining the two uh, characteristics. A future obtained uh, from the convolutional neural block, uh, he one and from the maximum pooling lawyer, he 2 due to the global average. Each uh, convolution subnet is used to mine future using different word combinations, depending on the size of kernels. In particular, for kernel uh, 5D, a comparison of five words is used to mine uh, the futures. Similarly, uh, the input text matrix is presented based on subnet with other kernels. We can see our architecture on this slide. Input text matrix uh, X0 is introduced into convoluted lawyers of uh, uh, different size to mine future. After that, uh, the initial input text matrix is combined with the future matrices after the convolutional transformation, and we obtain new input text matrices. We introduce new input text matrices in the second convolutional layer with uh, different kernels. Uh, to obtain new future matrices, we perform uh, the following operation to combine matrices. After uh, convolution transformation, a pooling operation is performed to obtain a new future matrices. After that, the new future matrices are combined to obtain a matrix uh, of a multi-scale block uh, for mining convolutional futures. The cat function described the matching of matrices uh, X1, uh, X2, X3, and X4. The future matrix uh, from the maximum pool lawyer of dimension uh, 50 is described by this formula. We combined matrix uh, futures uh, he one and he two using uh, the function cat to obtain a general future matrix he and perform one dimensional uh, global averaging operation he to obtain a, a, fine, uh, a final future matrix he. Function G is one dimensional average measure. After that, we present the final future matrix to the uh, neural network classifier to classify the text tonality. Uh, in computer experiment, we have six uh, different data sets were selected from the computer experiment, which are divided into different categories of text tonality. Uh, they include uh, game multi tweet, uh, sim evol, ss tweet, ag news, r8, and yahoo answers datasets. All of these datasets were randomly divided into three parts. 
uh, 70% training set, uh, 15% uh, validation set, and 15% uh, testing set. Uh, we can see information about data set on this table. Our model is compared with other models. Uh, CNN, text CNN, fast text, and uh, DP CNN models. Uh, findings uh, presented in this table show that our model has achieved uh, higher accuracy than its counterparts. In conclusion, uh, a hybrid convolutional neural network for text tonality analysis has been developed. It consists of a convolutional block of parallel and sequential connection between uh, lawyers and lawyer of maximum power obtained from the matrix of the original text. Uh, it is shown that uh, such a hybrid convolutional neural network uh, mines text future using a convolutional block. Then it mines and classifies the future by combining this future with the original text futures. It was proved uh, that a hybrid convolutional neural network with parallel and sequential connection between lawyers provides a higher efficiency of text uh, tonality classification in six different databases. Thank you for your attention. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, the questions for the author of this presentation, please. Okay, I can see that uh, uh, the audience is having no questions. Uh, thank you again. And uh, we will uh, move to our next uh, speaker. And uh, our next speaker is the second presentation according to our program. Ivan Smos Vasil Pisiluk Yuri Lukashuk, Yuri Opatyak, Methods of Training and Implementation on the Basis of Neural Networks of Cryptographic Data Protection. Uh, please uh, proceed. Um, yes, hello. My name is Yuri. Let me turn on camera. Hello. So I will be the presenter of our work. So I guess I will share my screen and show our presentation. Okay. 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 Give me a second. Just a little. Yeah. Do you see my screen? Yes, we do. Sorry. Yeah. So, uh, our work, method of training and implementation on the basis of neural networks of cryptographic data protection. So, uh, first, let me introduce our team. So, here on the screen, you can see persons who are uh, touched with this work. So we work at heart on this. So once more, it's Vassal Tisluk, me, Yuri Lukashuk, and Yuri Potek. Uh, okay, uh, now let's move to the agenda. So first of all, we will start from introduction. Then we will have, I, will, I will talk about some goals of our research. Then we will talk about methods and materials. Then I will show you some experiments that we were performed, and then I will show you our results. In the end, we will have conclusions. Uh, introduction. Yes. Uh, when uh, transmitting important information and remotely controlling mobile robotic systems by unmanned aerial vehicles and various mobile transport systems, an important task is to ensure cryptographic protection of data transmission. Uh, solving this problem requires the development of new methods and algorithms for cryptographic protection, focused on effective real-time software and hardware implementation with restriction on size, power, consumption, and costs. Uh, on way to meet such requirements is to use an auto-associative neural networks of direct propagation, which is trained, the, uh, trained on the basis of principal components mantle. A feature of such neural networks is the ability to pre-calculate weights and use them to implement cryptographic protections. Uh, to implement the task of the cryptographic data protection, it's proposed to use a neural network with encryption with symmetric keys. Uh, 
uh, when implementing uh, symmetric crypto means the encryption key and the decryption key are the same or the, de the description key is easily calculated from the encryption key. Uh, the main component of the encryption key is the architecture of the neural network and the metrics of ways calculated for it. Uh, now, uh, let me show our goals. Uh, achieving uh, goals is uh, work involves solving the following tasks. So, to, to solve the following task, uh, implement of the methods of singular matrix decomposition, uh, development of software for calculating weights for a given architecture of neural network, implementation of cryptographic neural like encryption and data decryption on the basis of my on the basis of microcomputer. So this is our goals. And now uh, let's go to the section of methods and materials. First of all, I will show you formulas that we use it for our work. So first part is about tools and algorithms that we use for finding weights. So we use it singular value, value decomposition, some of the uh, <clears throat> views of SVD. Uh, the first formula is like, you know, general view uh, of uh, SVD. Uh, to calculate the eigenvalues and eigenvectors, uh, the Jacobi rotation method was used in which the eigenvalues and eigenvectors of the symmetric matrix are calculated by iteration. This process of calculation eigenvectors is known as the di di diagonalization. Uh, the essence of the Jacobi <clears throat> method is to construct a sequence of orthogonal similar matrix which converge to a diagonal matrix on which the diagonals are proper the values of the matrix. So you can see here formulas to calculate the diagonal uh, elements and to calculate uh, to find eigenvalues. So the third section is about uh, you know the flow uh, how we uh, find the final formula to uh, calculate uh, weights. So um, this formula was uh, figured out also by uh, by uh, analyzing source principal components natural networks by Dim Dimantras and Kunt. And the first row, you can see it's like the formula for uh, data encryption. So W, yes, W is our weights matrix and a vector is like the row of the input uh, input um, user input message oh, yes that would be better uh, uh, on the next slide oh, yes you can see the structure of a uh, neural network on the left it's like uh, structure of neural network for data encryption and on the right it's structure for data description uh, as well. Uh, so to say uh, the first important step is to choose the neural network architecture for cryptographic encryption and data decryption. Uh, the architecture, architecture of the neural network is determined by the number of neural elements. So let me show on the next screen. We also have an example there. Uh, so yes, one more time. The architecture of neural network is determined by the number of neural, uh, neural elements. It's like N. Uh, the number of inputs K and the bit uh, inputs M. Mm, for example, uh, to encrypt a 16-bit control command into the following neural network architecture options, we will have three different uh, architectures. So. You can see here like uh, this uh, sequence of of, a, of determination of architecture and uh, according to what we have like inputs we have different views of uh, architecture of neural network uh, okay uh, now let's move to the experiment section uh, here what i want you to show it's how our program look like and how it works. Uh, for our test, we used architecture with uh, where bit size of message is 16 and bit size of input is two. So it's like the inputs that user enter. So that the amount of neural network is eight. 
and uh, input amount is also eight. So it's like uh, generate calculated according to what user uh, enters. Um, uh, on the left side, you can see how our application looks like. It's like the starting, and I don't know, it's like the head of our program. Uh, and on the right, it is le like a learning matrix that we use it to learn our neural network, like an input for our program. Mm, yes, input. As you can see, we have we used uh, 14 different commands. So each row is like a command of uh, message besides of 16. Mm, okay, next. Uh, on this screen, you can see how, uh, according to formulas that I showed you before, we uh, calculated, we find a matrix of weights. And then we use this matrix to first encrypt uh, input message. So here on the, like on the, on the top of this uh, image, it's like the message that enters a uh, user. Uh, and according and according to matrix weights that we matrix weights matrix that we have, we have such result, uh, uh, such encryption result. So it's like an encrypted message. And on the next screen, it's like decryption. Uh, so as input, we use uh, the values from the previous uh, work, and as a result, it's like the same as user enters uh, for encryption. So this I show you that uh, how our program works, and now how now we uh, I will move to section where we use this uh, this weights uh, on some microcomputer uh, to implement the task of encryption decryption. A software package has been developed, which includes software models, neural network encryptor, neural network dec uh, decoder, and their configuration model. Uh, so the implementation of these models is uh, uh, carried out in high level C language, which, which is due to the need of ensure compatibility of implementation of different hardware pro platforms. Uh, because of microcomputer is used to, uh, to implement onboard models, a standard GCC compiler is used to compile and debug the models. Uh, for this purpose, three separate the direct directories were created to test previously developed and the bucket files of program tra tra training AAN. It's like on the first row, uh, and crypt AAN, the second one, and uh, the crypt AAN, the last one. These programs were configured to implement uh, <laughs> this three neural network configuration. Uh, next, it was performed uh, sequentially using a neural network with a defined architecture using the configuration files, uh, encrypting data based on a neural network using the software model uh, EncryptAN, and decryption them, uh, decrypting them using the software model decryptAN. Uh, similar tasks, uh, tests were performed for two other configurations <laughs> of neural network uh, architecture. It's like uh, for uh, for this one, where uh, m <laughs> equals 4, k equals 4, n equals 4, and also for this one. Uh, at the same time, in the identical results were obtained, uh, neural network with this architecture successfully provided encryption and decryption of files with the identical input vectors and responded to corrupted input data. Um, according to the test result for this three neural network architecture, the following data were updated. So you can see uh, the results on our on the, on this image on the top, it's table one, learning, uh, encryption and decryption execution time of the three neural network architecture. Uh, and also, uh, we can see here this uh, time diagram, uh, also of learning encryption and decryption uh, operation of three neural network architecture. Mm -hmm. To obtain more accurate results, the following software model were run 10 times and the results were averaged. Next one. <clears throat> mm -hmm. 
Uh, the results of testing the implementation of neural network encryption decryption of data show that the longest operation is the formation and training of neural network. And it is execution time on microcomputer is about 200 milliseconds and does not depend on the architecture of the selected neural network. On the other hand, the, the, execution, the execution time of neural network cryptographic encryption and decryption of data blocks uh, when implemented on microcomputer is from 30 to 38 milliseconds and 23 to 35 milliseconds, respectively. Uh, another important parameter when uh, creating the data processing system based on microcomputer is the temperature of the device which is uh, the result of CPU usage and in the indirectly in indicates the intensity of three calculations. Uh, to access the dynamics of interpretation changes, changes, a script was used, which performs neural network cryptographic encryption and decryption operation in the loop. Uh, the script in the loop uh, alternately runs the developed encrypted and decryption software models with a delay of uh, 1, 0.1 seconds and thus loads the microcomputer processor. Next, the processor temperature parameters is read and output to the control console. The script was run for a long time, for about, I don't know, uh, 30 minutes for testing. And the result of the RPI monitor utility are shown on this screen. So you can see the graph of temperature and load of microcomputer or based on the uh, so see H2 plus during uh, cycling uh, execution of software models of our encryption and decryption. Okay, and now conclusions. Uh, application for calculating weights using improved SVD methods were developed. The encryption decryption software was implemented on the basis of SOC H2 plus microcomputer, and it was determined that encryption decryption time is approx approximately 30 milliseconds. Uh, oper operate in near real time. Uh, the obtained encryption decryption time does not depend much on the configuration of the neural network architecture and is acceptable for the implementation of this task on embedded system. Uh, the time of operation of neural network formation in its, its training is an order of uh, magnitude longer. Analysis of the obtained graphs of the microcomputer CPU load shows that the software implementation of encryption decryption procedures does not significantly increase the temperature. Uh, apparently this is facilitated by an uh, efficient regular radiator and problems with embedded system. Temperature should not occur. Good. Uh, I'm really appreciate for your time and thank you for your attention. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, any questions for uh, our speaker? I want to try my microphone. Uh, is it here? Yeah, yeah, sure. Yeah. Oh, yeah. thank you, thank you very much. Uh, I want to uh, to ask you, Yuri. Uh, how do you think? Uh, in which way you can develop your uh, work in future? It's a good question. Thank you. Uh, so first of all, is a first step of improving is to improve our. Uh, program for calculating for calculating weights it, sorry <laughs> sorry just interference and we are now in discussion how to do it in the best way and according to what we receive uh, as a result of this improvement we will send what we will do next mm -hmm. in which criterion uh, also under discussion this question mm -hmm. thank you very much thank you i am satisfied thank you if i to is book thank you very much if uh, there are no other questions I, uh, before I pass the word to the next. But uh, 
Uh, now is the minute of the silence. Yes, yes, yes. I, I, I just uh, would like to remind uh, that uh, we have a very good traditions to uh, every day in nine hours to observe uh, one minute of silence to commemorate our fallen uh, soldiers and um, other victims of Russian aggression. So now is uh, one minute of silence. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. And uh, I will invite our next speaker according to the program. Next speaker is uh, uh, Vlad Vladislav Kuznetsov, Yuri Krak, Alexander Barmak, Anatoly Kulis, Valentina Petrovich. A comparative study on algorithm of computer vision and deep learning for facial expression analysis. Dear colleagues, uh, may I uh, skip to the presentation? Sure. Uh, okay, so I will uh, do it a little bit uh, the same way as my colleague did. Uh, uh, so you can see as well presentation. Yes. So let's let, let's uh, keep, uh, skip to our work. Uh, first of all, it's uh, sorry. Uh, so this is a work dedicated to the study of algorithms of uh, computer vision and deep learning uh, for facial expression analysis and error uh, deep learning tasks. This uh, work was held. Uh, as a collaboration with our colleagues from Taras Shevchenko National University of Kyiv and Khmelnytsky National University, and uh, the main authors uh, presented from the Glushkov Institute of Cybernetics. So why this work was happened? Uh, it's really like, like a rhetorical question. Every scientist is uh, every time trying to improve uh, his works and uh, uh, to study and use technologies or methods or algorithms or other things that will improve uh, this person as a scientist. We had uh, various studies dedicated to natural language processing, uh, to study general machine learning, uh, classification clustering, and uh, various applications uh, uh, such as uh, emotion recognition and gesture recognition. And this, this uh, study happened as a question what do we need uh, to, to implement our works uh, using not just a general machine learning or deep learning, but implement on a certain uh, hardware. So all of our studies uh, before were implemented uh, on uh, uh, CPUs and we wanted to impl implement them in the G GPUs. So in order to solve this, we made uh, as such uh, questions. So they will help us uh, to proceed to the work. So we had to perform a certain experiments uh, to, to know a baseline performance uh, for our system on a certain task is a computer vision. And then to perform this task on a deep learning, but just for facial expression and emotion recognition. Then we needed to use or 
uh, suggest some benchmarks to know the baseline performance uh, for our system and our hardware. And then uh, compare uh, the performance of our system and uh, a performance that we needed or expected to have. So you use it to main data sets. First data set was uh, made uh, in 2015. Uh, and uh, it consists of uh, facial expression re recognition problem using uh, computer, general computer vision. We had uh, a database of uh, trajectories of the points in the human face. And the second data set was uh, actually is it, videos and photos of facial expressions. So we tested our hypothesis on two different data sets, preprocessed data set and uh, uh, data sets that were not preprocessed and were just images. So in order to be confident about this, uh, our system, we also tested a, a general purpose machine learning algorithms such as engine value decomposition and other methods. Uh, I don't want to stop here just uh, for a moment. And uh, deep learning methods such as uh, convolutional neural networks, uh, uh, deep autoencoders and other constructs that use it uh, for deep learning tasks such as facial expression classification and facial landmark detection. So first of all, where we started, there are some free online databases that say what can we expect from a certain piece of hardware. So they may a benchmarks, it's a Geekbench general test, general benchmark. And it says that a certain device has a performance of a specific number of points, a score. And then we can estimate the performance in some task in comparison. So we say this, this piece hard of where is better than that one because uh, there are some standardized benchmarks that say this uh, word. So using this free and open source information, we then proceed to our test. First of all, we needed to estimate our performance. We already had a specific task, facial emotion recognition using uh, convolution neural networks. This uh, convolution neural networks perform a specific task. They need to find a specific point on uh, an image that represents a, a human fa facial landmark. It's like a corner of mouse, a corner of eye, uh, or, or bro and or others. So we compared our test system is a different uh, CPUs from very old ones to practically newest ones. And then we estimated a performance for test systems. And then we uh, wanted to know what can we expect from a certain GPU. Because we, our task was to get a real-time performance on a specific task is 30 or 60 frames per second uh, on, a, on a video from a webcam. So using this uh, uh, task definition for our performance, so we expect to have this certain performance. And knowing uh, the baseline performance of our system, now we can uh, estimate what device do we need really. So really, if we will turn to this uh, slide, you can see that uh, certain devices have a comparative uh, value or score one against another. So we can see what device, old one, or really that uh, the newest one has a specific performance. I don't want to stop here and just proceed to our uh, test. So we created some series of tests. Is uh, worst case and best case scenario for specific task. First one was uh, uh, deep uh, deep autoencoder uh, tasks. So we tried to manipulate with uh, weights, uh, functions, uh, in order to see in which situation uh, 
certain GPU and a certain CPU behave one against another. And as we uh, found out that specific CPU, it was uh, AMD Ryzen 5 3600 and a certain GPU, it's uh, AMD Radeon uh, 6500 XT, they were tested one against another. And we saw that in very easy tasks where we use it really unconstrained um, deep onto encoder, uh, they behave to nearly the same. But after we increased the uh, difficulty of the task, the number of iteration, the performance ratio uh, changed. So the performance ratio uh, ch changed towards the GPUs. But in a very easy task, they behave at near the same. So the next task was to benchmark the GPU against the CPU in the task of uh, deep convolutional network classification, in particular facial expressions, uh, pictures or uh, frames of a video that uh, combined it in one data set, fair 230 data set. Uh, I'm very sorry the, of the quality of the image because it's a screenshot of uh, our test environment, uh, Python uh, Anaconda. I uh, just it made for, for a comparison. On the last, uh, I presented the performance of this task on the CPU, and on the right, the performance on the GPU. After the first epoch, happens a very interesting situation that the CPU performs nearly the same. The time of execution is the same uh, 450 seconds on a specific piece of hardware and on a specific task and a specific data set. And on the GPU, we saw very interesting situations that the time of the execution uh, was uh, changing towards the lower values. It changed um, uh, nearly in five times. So relative performance on the first epoch of uh, uh, this algorithm was uh, four against one. But on the next iterations, it, it happens that uh, it now uh, 20 against uh, one. And why it happens? Because uh, uh, GPUs have a certain bottlenecks. Uh, in order to proceed a da data on a GPU, uh, the computer has to load uh, initial weights, uh, the data and the, uh, and the memory of a GPU. So the first epoch is uh, really uh, looks uh, in significant terms of performance because it needs to load the values inside the memory. But after the next epochs, as long as the algorithms goes, we saw that uh, the, the difference becomes greater, 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 and greater. So I don't want to stop here and just uh, to skip to our conclusions of our work. Uh, main outcomes and conclusions of uh, our work uh, are the next. That uh, we studied uh, two different approaches. Uh, to, to benchmark and test uh, deep neural networks and deep autoencoders. First of all, is uh, task of uh, general uh, machine learning and deep learning and uh, computer, computer vision. And uh, I'm sorry. And then uh, we tested uh, best and worst case scenarios where the different pieces of hardware. Uh, Perform differently one against another in a different situation. And, and we figured out, as I, as I said before, that there is a bottleneck uh, that may uh, decrease the expected performance. So, knowing this information, now we can say that in order to perform specific tasks on a specific piece of hardware, we need really to give a very, very, very hard task for this piece of hardware. Or in other means, it will perform nearly the same as the as, as slowest uh, possible piece of hardware that we have at our laboratory. 
Uh, and uh, what uh, also I can say, I want to say a big thank you to be um, invited to this conference, uh, say that uh, the signs that we are making, it can make, make uh, made uh, everywhere, it doesn't depend what, what, what the country, because the sounds is uh, really international. So I'm very sorry, uh, I'm stopping here. You can ask the questions if you have. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much for your very detailed and very practical uh, report. Uh, any questions for the author? Okay, okay, thank you. Thank you again. Uh, we will proceed to our next speaker. Please. Okay, thank you. Uh, our next speaker, according to program, is uh, Kirill Smelekov, Yaroslav Hanchar, Alexander Bahamolov, Anastasia Chuprina. Machine learning models, efficiency analysis for image classification problem. Okay, thank you. I see your screen now. Hello, everyone. Now we will talk about machine learning models efficiency analysis for image classification problem. The successful application of neural networks to solve actual computer vision problems has led to the emergence of many new models of convolutional neural networks and their various modifications used for image detection and classification in recent years. Many CNN models can be pre-trained, and the aim of the work is to ensure the efficiency of machine learning of modern convolutional neural networks by using different methods. So, the tasks of the work are to develop a plan and set up a series of experiments on the application of widely used machine learning methods in relation to modern CNNs based on actual data evaluate the effectiveness of machine learning on free and frozen weights, formulate recommendations on the practical application of machine learning techniques and methods. The dataset consists of a set of images of different birds. The dataset was taken from the Kaggle platform, and you can find the dataset by scanning the QR code. The dataset is constantly updated and the number of images is constantly increasing. You can see the number of 100 classes in the link, but now there is a version of the dataset with 400 classes. By the way, at the time of conducting the experiment, there were only 300 classes. The dataset is divided into three parts, train, validation, and test images of the same size. We have used the following metrics. The precision is the ratio of correctly classified images to all classified images. The recall is the ratio of correctly classified images to all relevant images. The F1 score is the harmonic mean of precision and recall. We have used the minimum and average metrics for each class. According to the goals of the work, we have selected efficient net V2 type B0 and res net 50 as the models to be evaluated, and decided to test them by three methods of training CNNs including training the model from scratch, fine-tuning the pre-trained model, and transfer learning. We have used a Kaggle GPU as free and powerful computing power. This GPU has a memory of 16 gigabytes. This was the main restriction for processing only 128 images at once. The basic training procedure of each CNN was divided into three experiments each containing a limitation of 100 epochs and a learning rate of 1E-4. The first experiment was used to train the model from scratch. The second experiment was used to fine-tune the pre-trained model by using the frozen weights, 
unfreezing them, and finishing training. The third experiment was used to transfer the pre-trained model to the new model. This slide is a summary of the ResNet results and timings of the experiments. You can see comparatively worse results of the scratch model by a few times evaluating the error rate. Even using bare transfer learning the error rate is still higher than using fine tuning. By the way, fine tuning consumes a lot of time and is more complicated in the code. This slide is a summary of the efficient net results. The difference between the methods is almost negligible, but you can see that ResNet hasn't re efficient net has reached more than 96%. You can see the time consumption of the fine-tuning experiment, which is six times slower than the bare transfer learning in this case. Summarizing all said, we can say the following. Firstly, we can still use random weights for some mediate efficiency if there is no pre-trained model. Secondly, we can obtain a pre-trained model. We can combination with other models to achieve better results, but if we need to use only one model, Efficient Net version 2 is a better choice. As you can see, all the planned tasks of the work were completed because the experiments plan was developed, a series of experiments was set up, the effectiveness of machine learning was evaluated and summary with recommendations were formulated. Thank you for your attention. Thank you very much for your uh, reporting. And uh, any questions for the audience, to the author? Okay, if there are no questions, then thank you again. And uh, we are moving to our next presentation. I uh, will, okay, just a moment. Someone is, uh, according to the program, our next presentation is Alexander Bessonov, Oleg Ilunin, Oleg Rodenka, and Oleg Sotnikov, Intelligent Identification, System for of the process liquid solutions composition. I'm not sure if someone of offers is present here. Please report if you are present. Okay. Maybe we will listen to this presentation uh, some other time. And now I am announcing uh, the next presentation by Sergei Vladov, Yuri Shmelov in Russian, Ruslan Yakovlev, Method for Forecasting of uh, Helicopters, Aircraft, Engines, Technical State in Flight Modes Using Neural Networks. Okay, please proceed. Ivan Viktorovich tam včera byl silný udar po po Kremenčovu, a oni z Kremenčova. Ta. Oni se šlo jim nekdo, že u nich nemá internetu, oni včera večer tam hovorili. No, může být. Může být. Když ty rakety zapustili po Kremenčovu. Ta, může být, že oni nemůžou to prostě. A to je pan. A to 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 Sergej Vladov je. Já bacho, že vím. Tak dobro, tak dobrého dne. Já dějstvo z Kremenčuka. I včera Kremenčuk zaznal blízko 12 raketních obstřelů. Nebylo ne světla, ani vody včera. Ale já psal, já psal, že možná já nezmůžu dolučit, jestli už bez kus takými těžkými obstávanými. Ale včera večeři světlo zjevilo se u místě. Částkovo, navíc voda. Důže slabký napor vod. Тому є можливість, поки є світло, долучитись і продемонструвати дві свої роботи. Дякую. Дякую.
Пане Сергій, тоді, будь ласка, будете доповідати? Так, можу доповідати, якщо ви мені зараз дайте демонстрацію екрану, щоб я мог презентацію ввімкнути. Включено ні. Демонстрація дозволена, можете вмикати. Зараз одну хвилиночку я вмикаю, вмикаю презентацію, зараз вона завантажиться і я буду... Так, 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 завантажується. Так, є. Так, 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 вмикаю. Так, і чому не бачить? Так. Так, ви мою презентацію бачите? Поки що ні, але вже б щось ніби. Вона запустилася, так. Жиє. Дуже добре. Так, я тоді, я тоді з вашого дозволу почну свою доповідь. Можна? Будь ласка. Будь ласка. Так, я починаю. Добре. Так, дякую. Good day, dear participants of the conference. With your permission, I present a work methodology for Ой, метод for forecasting of helicopters, aircraft, engine, technical state and flight modes using neural networks. Helicopters, aircraft, turbo shaft engines, TES recoverable objects during their service life recovery, continuous monitoring, the complexity of which depends on the level of automation of obtaining, processing, storing, documenting information processes about their current state, their sequence and methods of which determine the monitoring information technology. The main, так. The main direction that determine the improvement of the quality of information technologies for monitoring of aircraft turbo shaft engines technical state should be considered the intellectualization of information processes using data mining methods that can improve the quality of recognition of the technical state of gas turbine engines under the action of the above on certain factors, as well the integration of information processes, distribu distributed local databases and knowledge bases into a global database and knowledge. In this work, an engineering met methodology is developed for solving the problem of forecasting of helicopter turboshaft engine's technical state in flight modes using neural network technologies. Так. Methods for forecasting of aircraft turbojet engine's technical state using neural networks I described the detail in the works of Professor Serhii Zhernakov, while the adaptation of these methods in relation to aircraft engines of helicopters. However, this approach is based on the use of a static neural networks that implement time. Therefore, to forecast of helicopters, aircraft, turboshaft, engine, technical state in flight modes that in real time, this approach requ requires significant modification. In partic particular, that use of a recurrent dynamic neural network. In this regard, this paper proposes a method based on the use of a recurrent dynamic neural network. 
This slide shows a general, generalized mathematical description of the problem of forecasting the technical state of helicopter and aircraft engine in real time. Yes. This, this work solves the problem of optimal control, which simulates the dynamic of the considerate neural network in the problem of monitoring complex technical objects. On, this, on the basis of solving a, pro, a system of differential equations with delay, an algorithm for finding the numerical solution is obtained, which is the basis for solving the control problem. After analyzing several architectures of neural networks that are used to solve the problem of time series forecasting, we choose generalized regression network, GRNN. The final output estimate of the neural network opta is obtained as a weighted average of the outputs over all training observations, where the weight values reflect the distance from this observation to the point at which the estimate is made. The advantage of the GRNN network can be considered the certainty of the structure. The network actually contains all the training data. The following aircraft turboshaft engine thermogas dynamic parameters recorded on helicopter board are used as input data in this work, reduced to absolute parameters according to the theory of gas dynamic simil similarity developed by Professor Valery Augustinovich. The, this is gas ge generator rotor RPM, gases temperature in front of the compressor turbine. The, the article studies the dependence of the quality of forecasting on the parameters of the training algorithm and the structure of neural network. The number of neurons in the first hidden layer is eight. The number of neurons in the second hidden layer is six. The forecast range is five. The training algorithm is pattern. The alg algorithm parameters are optimal. The partition of reading of a series into sets is optimal. In this figure shows a diagram of the neural network training error. On this figure shows the results of, com of a comparative analysis of the neural network for classical methods for forecasting of helicopters, aircraft, turboshaft engines, technical state. For example, TV3117 engines for gases temperature in front of the compressor turbine at the most significant parameters where it is indicated. One. Real value, value of gas, gases temperature in front of the compressor turbine. Two, value of gases temperature in front of the compressor turbine calculated using neural network. Three, value of gases temperature in front of the compressor turbine calculated on the basis of the moving average methods. Four, value gases temperature of the compressor turbine in the front of the compressor turbine calculated using the exponential smoothing method. Five, value of the gases temperature in front of the compressor turbine calculated using the least squares method. The results of a comparative analysis of the work of a classical and neural and neural network methods for forecasting of helicopters, aircraft, turboshaft engines, technical state are given in table, where the solid line corresponds to forecast errors in the absence of noise, and the dash dots 
line corresponds to forecast errors in the pre presence of additive interference noise. In table, the following designation are used. S, short time forecast. M, medium term. L, long term. M, A, M, moving average methods. M, E, S, exponential smoothing methods. M, L, S, least squares methods. In table show, shows the forecast results for two cases. Clean measurements obtained in the absence of additional random noise. Measurements in the presence of additive random interf interference in the form of white noise. In this figure, gases temperature in front of the compressor turbine forecast error corresponds to the use of one and two moving average methods, three and four exponential smoothing methods, five and six mm -hmm. squares methods, seven and eight neural network methods. In this case, the solid line corresponds to forecast error in the absence of noise, and the dash dots line corresponds to forecast error in the presence of an additive obstacle noise. The conclusions are present in this slide. Thanks for attention. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, any questions for the, our reporter? Okay. Thank you. Thank you again. Thank you very much. And uh, we will move to... Uh, do we have another maybe presentation to do? Okay, Sergei, do you have another presentation? No? Uh, presentations for to my article. Second article, yes? Second, second. Yes, yes, yes. Yes, one, one, one minute, please. Uh, okay. I open a demonstration of monitor. Так. Так, демонстрация. Do you see my presentation? Yes, it seems. Yes. Yes, we yes. Do. Thank you. This article is optimization of helicopters, aircraft, engines, work in process using neural networks technologies. The development and operation of complex technical systems at the modern level involves the mandatory use of their mathematical models, which can be defined as a mathematical image of the essential aspects of a real system of its design in a convent form that reflects information about system. With regard, regard of, to helicopter turboshaft engines and its modification, which is a complex technical system, during its creation and operation, a large number of, um, of mathematical models of different types of the engine as a whole and its individual components are developed. Calculation based on the finite elements methods, FEM, used in modern practice require a significant amount of comp computer time. 
The method of multi-criteria optimization based on approximate model for dynamic systems was developed by Yuri Zelenkov. However, the implementation of this method is possible only at the design stage of an aircraft engine. Therefore, therefore, the actual scientific and practical task solved in this work is the improvement of, the, of this method in relation to helicopters' engines at the mode of their flight operation, that is, in real time. An, an analysis of even simply simplified method of thermogas dynamic calculation of aircraft engines, including helicopter turboshaft engines, shows that more than 13 parameters, independent variables, affect the definition of the working process and consequently the design of the engine. In this case, the dependence linking the, the Independent variables are non-linear non and the impossible, impossible that, they are, that they are different table functions. Today, a number of multi-criteria optimization methods are now based off on non-linear non programming and genetic algorithm. One of the most efficient con constraint multi-criteria A2, genetic algorithm. The investigated dependencies and, and interdisciplinary, it is possible to, to the different table of convexity of these functions. In addition, we're developing new products. The task is never to find the best parameters of a new product. The global Pareto optimal set and all efforts are direct, directed only to ensure providing greater re resistance to deviation that in inevitably arise during the production process. Analysis of architectures of neural network was carried out, which were used in solving the problem of multi-criteria optimization. The choose the choose the choose fell of a radial basis neural network RBF for RBF now network train network training a gradient algorithm based on minimize, minimizing the objective functions in the network error is used. In accordance with the algorithm for each element, the values of change in the weight coefficient element with, with and element center coordinates are calculated. Evolutionary algorithm for constructing a neural network of a radial basis is shown in figure. Так. To evaluate the efficiency of the proposed algorithm, consider the problem of approximation of the function. The diagrams of the function being approximated shown in figure A. The error of its approximation based on this method is shown in figure B. Thus, the proposed method for generating RBF network can significantly reduce the computation time and provide more efficient network with power, ne power net neurons and less error compared to the traditional methods. To test the, to test the effect.
problem in accordance with the algorithm. At the first step, a training set of 15 the 50 decision vectors was generated in accordance with the central composite, composite design for experiment with center of the face. Так, of, the, of this 50 solution, 10 met the constraints and the seven were non-dominant. Based on this sample, the approximate models were built for target variables and constraints based on neural network of a radial basis is in accordance with the method described about, above. Tape this table, this table for each model shows the number of neurons in hidden layer and fitness calculated by the expression. In, fi in figure A also showed the Pareto optimal set, Pareto front obtained by the NSGA2 method Tak, in figure in figure B shows a comparison comparison of three Pareto optimal set of solution obtained on, on the basis of the approximate model proposed here. Tak. Some of the found Pareto optimal parameters of the working process of air of the TV3117, turbo shaft, a turbo, turbo shaft engine are presented in table. The results obtained indicate the proposed method for constructing approximate models allows the reducing the amount of computed time spent on calculation in case of multi criteria optimization with constraints by more than 50, 50, 50 times. The program pro protected because the described methods is implemented right in, the, the, in Python for modern library and script. The program is packaged with clear, clear modules in order to implement ex experiment planning. Optimi optimization using the NSGA2 method mod model approximation on the basis of the RBF network. And it was for analysis more and a graphical interface of the core. The conclusions are presented of this slide. Thanks, thanks for attention. Thank you very much. Thank you. Questions for a speaker? Questions? <laughs> okay, if there's no uh, questions, I will announce our next speaker and our last presentation. Thank you, thank you very much. Thank you. Our next speaker is Margarita Sharko, Natalia. Hey, Yes. Тільки на презентував і другу статтю. Я можу у 16:45 не підключатися. Так. Так, тобто вона вже зарахована. Я у 16:45 можу не підключатися на Так. Це дякую, щиро вам дякую. Плідної усім праці. Тримайтеся там, коментуйте. До побачення. Бать so now we have a coffee break until 10 5. Thank you, do pobachinya. Goodbye.
Okay, we are renewing our uh, session of a conference, and uh, it seems that our next, next speaker is currently absent. And so I will uh, give the word, give the floor to uh, our guest from Austria, Liza Posch, Andreas Nodenov, and Christine Strauss, reward based crowdfunding, successful signaling from an entrepreneur. Liza, are you ready? Thank you. Yeah, I will just take a need a second um, for um, taking the presentation for opening. It. Okay, thanks. Thanks. Um, just give me a second. So hello, welcome <laughs> uh, to my presentation. I hope you can see uh, the presentation right now. Yes, yes, we do. Great. Um, so hello, my name is Lisa Posch and today I'm going to present the paper reward-based crowdfunding, uh, successful signaling um, from an entrepreneur, um, authored by me, Andreas Mladenov, and also Christine Strauss. Um, for the agenda for today, um, it will be about or starting with the definition of crowdfunding. Um, then I will talk about the forms of crowdfunding and uh, then I will focus on the definition on uh, reward based crowdfunding. Um, then I will um, go through uh, what is signaling, the overview um, of the signals and also um, my or from the research findings the most relevant signals which are the quality signals and also the communication signals um, so now i like to start with the definition of crowdfunding um, crowdfunding is a form of fund fundraising which is mainly uh, online based since the appearance of web 2.0 um, a large number of people uh, build a bundle of individual contributions and they support a specific project or um, aim. Um, there is no standard uh, financial intermediary between the entrepreneurs and the crowd like a bank. Um, there are three main actors, the crowd, the entrepreneurs, and also the platform. The platform is also called intermediary, uh, and it, as it connects the entrepreneurs to the crowd. In, uh, for example, Indiegogo or Kickstarters uh, are famous examples uh, for or of platforms. Um, however, in this paper, um, the focus is entrepreneur towards the crowd. Um, then there are different forms of crowdfunding which can be distinguished. Um, the most or those are the most popular ones equity-based, donation-based, lending-based, and then reward-based crowdfunding. My focus uh, on this paper was uh, currently on the most relevant form of crowdfunding, which is the reward-based crowdfunding concept. Uh, what is reward-based crowdfunding? Uh, individuals to fund their projects. As service offers make you better. Uh, the size of rewards. Um, for example, when contributing five euros, the reward will be smaller compared to donating 5,000 euros. 
where there might be a special honoring um, product benefit for the great support. Um, then there are two forms um, of reward-based crowdfunding, which is um, the all or nothing concept and also the keep it all concept. And what does it mean? The all or nothing concept means that the concept can be described as a model where the entrepreneur determines a fundraising goal and only receives the funding when the goal will be reached. As a result, the all or nothing concept will be classified as less risky and enables the fundraisers to be more successful. Therefore, it is a crucial signal towards the crowd. With the keep it all concept, it means that the entrepreneur is able to keep the whole amount of contribution indifferent um, whether the funding goal was reached. However, uh, there is no guarantee that the project can be successfully implemented and the concept bears the risk that projects are underfunded and also more likely to fail. Um, then in the next step, I like also to give a definition um, what is signaling. Um, it's between the triadic relationship of the crowd, the entrepreneur, and also the platform. Um, and there's this asymmetric information problem that can accuse, which means that insiders have more information about the project than outside investors. Um, signaling works as an observable action performed by the project initiators to convince the funders um, or the donors about the value and also quality of their products. Um, this tries to bridge the information gap uh, that can occur. Signals can be positively or negatively received. Um, and signals can be any form of information or communication. Um, receivers have an influence on the effectiveness on, of signaling and reward-based crowdfunding. For example, uh, types of communications, preparation time, and so on. And this I will discuss um, for the relevant signals and reward-based crowdfunding later on. Um, so now I'd like to give an overview of the signals. Um, in the recent paper, I categorized from the entrepreneur through the intermediary. The platform functions as intermediary as a connection with the funders on the platform. The entrepreneur builds a relationship with the crowd, which contributes an amount of money to a specific project on the platform. Therefore, a crowdfunding platform creates positive cross-group effects between the entrepreneur and the crowd. Quality signals, it can be mentioned that in order to rate the success in reward-based crowdfunding, quality signals play a major role. I will explain them more in detail on the next slide. Um, for the communication signals, it can be mentioned that social media presence can positively affect the trustworthiness and the ob observed risk, and it helps to increase the number of contributors in reward-based crowdfunding. For the reward signals, um, the rewards play a major role in reward-based crowdfunding as they will be offered in exchange to the fundings. Rewards can vary a lot, but mostly the rewards itself is the developed product of an entrepreneur. Um, and least um, the fifth signals are the signals with respect to social and sustainable focus. Um, Globally, there is a concern about the high importance of environmental and also social problems, such as the climate change. Entrepreneurs try to adapt to the challenges by producing innovative products and services that at least uh, protect the environment and also communities. And companies and organizations also take competitive advantage for strategically following sustainable approaches. This can be um, a signal to the crowd. Um, due to the limitations, uh, I limited the presentation to specific categories. The focus uh, will be on the most relevant signals out of these categories, uh, which is the quality signals and also the communication signals, which I will explain in detail right now. So um, for the quality signals, there can be uh, some more distinguished 
distinguishes between the preparation time, patent, duration of campaign, project description, also updates on the projects. Um, for the preparation time, it can be said that it can be assumed that a longer preparation, a longer time of preparation has a positive impact on the development of a crowdfunding campaign, but also can be related to higher costs. For the patents, um, it can be said that patents also can be seen as a significant um, signals of the firm's a fundamental quality uh, towards potential investors in order to reduce um, the information asymmetry issue. Patents are recognizable. It shows that the company is able to additional knowledge that helps to create added value. Duration of the signal in this category it can be said that the duration of the campaign which an entrepreneur collects financial resources from the crowd. As an example, Kickstarters recommends a time period of approximately 30 days. A longer time span may be interpreted um, from the crowd as a signal of insuffi insufficient confidence from the entrepreneurs to reach contribution on a lack of belief in them. Uh, for the project description, it can be mentioned that between the entrepreneurs and the crowd, the asymmetric information issue can occur. This in the case because is this is the case because the crowd needs the trust of information offered by the project initiator. Uh, to overcome this issue, being able to provide a project description with detailed information of the project can be helpful and as a consequence also reduce the information gap and then therefore the um, asymmetric information problem. Uh, for the updates of the project, it can be said that the project updates work in the sense of a secure, security towards the crowd because it shows that the entrepreneur cares about the funders. As a consequence, it can be stated that the positive impact of project updates implies that existing funders are important to generate new funders. In the research conducted, um, 12 interviews, uh, 12 experts were interviewed, and they also could confirm that the preparation time is important for the success of a crowdfunding campaign. And the project descriptions is an important signal for a successful crowdfunding campaign. Um, however, they also mentioned that the frequent updates do not have an impact on the crowdfunding success. Um, for the signaled communication, um, I also uh, made, a dif um, made a difference um, between the relevant signals, and they can be distinguished in social media, homepage linkage, to the platform and tracking of the project URL, and also the digital communication tools on the platform, uh, which is the visual appeal, and also the electronic word of mouth. Now for social media, it can be said that some platforms have direct links to, for example, Facebook, LinkedIn, or Instagram. Therefore, it can be tracked how many Facebook visitors and connections every entrepreneur has. And um, there is an assumption that a high number of social media connections of a founder increases the success of a reward-based crowdfunding uh, project. For the homepage linkage, uh, it can be uh, assumed that an exter external website also works as a signal as it demonstrates um, that the entrepreneur is not only interested in a single uh, campaign, but in starting a whole business. And as a consequence, having an external website, it assumes to be a positive signal, which initiates a higher chance of a campaign success. Um, and for the digital communication tools on the platform, and so the visual appeal, um, it means that the digital communication activities on the platform contains tools like the videos, 
images and also project descriptions. Um, the most important factors to create a visual appeal uh, include inspiring videos, attractive images, a great logo, and also product photos. Uh, the video is the most relevant source in order to portray the product services or the overall project, including aims and job objectives, and delivers necessary information about the entrepreneur or the team behind the scenes. And for the uh, last uh, category, electronic word of mouth, it can be said that this form of communication is seen as a very efficient and also affects the behavior and the buying decision of consumers. Electronic word of mouth relates to the concept of vir viral marketing and enables customers to spread messages virally without a without any further external action taken. Web 2.0 and the usage of the internet as a communication tool allows social interactions and connects users, especially through social media platforms. Um, and the research findings also showed um, that the video is the most impactful communication tool and most of the project initiators do not consider the trope the traffic on the project URL as an impactful tool for a successful crowdfunding campaign. Um, but there is a significant agreement on the positive impact of electronic word of mouth on the success of a campaign. And also for the experts, the key effective marketing tool is social media, uh, followed by more tradi traditional marketing and PR tools. So. Thank you very much for your intent, attention and that I have the chance to present it today to you. Thank you, thank you, thank you very much. And uh, so traditionally, I will ask uh, whether the, uh, the audience have any question for you and discussion for your interesting presentation. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Okay, then I will ask a question. Uh, so what about uh, the criteria of efficiency of uh, signaling? Uh, uh, how do you discern which uh, signal was efficient or not efficient? Mm -hmm. um, I used the methodology um, of, um, I conducted the interviews and um, um, according to Meiring, uh, and um, afterwards, or before that, I did a really um, specific, um, um, sorry, <laughs> I forgot oh. the word. Um, okay. I, I really, um, I really got through uh, a lot of papers oh. and um, found all relevant information or all relevant um, papers for it, uh -huh. and afterwards um, I tried with um, the the interviews to yeah. to see if there uh -huh. is a um, if they if they tell them the same or if there uh -huh. was a difference between it. Okay, okay, I understood. Okay, thank you very much. If uh, uh, for your interesting presentation, uh, if uh, there are no more questions. So thank you again. And uh, we'll move to our next uh, presenter. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Mm -hmm. I just need to stop it. OK. So uh, our next uh, uh, report is uh, by uh, Mikola, Mikola Odrychivsky, Lyubomir Vankovic, and Orysia Shikowalska. Problem of, problems of construction of smart innovative enterprises. Yes, hello. <clears throat> Ladies and gentlemen, uh, let me introduce uh, our work. I will start uh, my screen. One moment, please. If you will do not uh, hear, please let me know. Good.
Problems of Construction of Smart Innovative Enterprises by Mykola Odrychivsky, Lyubomir Vankovich, and Orisa Przykowalska. <coughs> the purpose of the scientific work is to study problems of smart management and design of integrated intelligent information management systems. Do you hear me? Yes, we do hear you, but we don't see your presentation. One moment, please. One moment. Okay. And now? Yes, we do. We see. Mm -hmm. uh, so, uh, Problems of Construction of Smart Innovative Enterprises by Mykola Drachivsky, Lubomir Vinkovic, and Orisa Przykowalska. Um, the purpose of the scientific work is uh, to study problems of smart management and uh, design uh, of intelligent uh, integrated information management system of uh, smart innovative enterprises. The approaches to um, formation of the smart management processes are studied. This um, approaches investigation additionally proves the importance for modern business conditions to design the management model that provide economic efficiency of enterprises. The interpretation of the concept of digital factory, smart factory, and virtual factory has been further developed. The implementation of general and special methods uh, is caused uh, by the goals and the logic of uh, problems solving for smart management uh, and designed the system of smart innovative enterprises um, that are based on the using of industry uh, for zero. Um, smart enterprises today is smart management, IT data platforms and real management knowledge source of business processes combined. A modern method of uh, production and organization of technological process equipped uh, with uh, sensors, computational methods, new materials, data analysis, artificial intelligence, organizational management, and uh, communication technologies for um, smart manufacturing. Uh, that is, uh, smart manufacturing combines computing pro platforms, communications, um, technologies, uh, mod modeling, uh, intelligent engineering, etc. Mm -hmm. uh, science today, smart enterprises are divided uh, into smart manufacturing, digital, and uh, virtual enterprises. Mm -hmm. uh, it will, in the work uh, based on the concept of smart manufacturing, digital, and virtual enterprises, it is uh, proposed to develop a project to build uh, smart, uh, innovative enterprises. Uh, the theory of Markovian stochastic processes using the chapman kolmogorov equation system based on the um, dynamic and static mathematical models followed by computer technology used to su support decision uh, making on the condition of development of um, smart innovative enterprise or any element of their hierarchy and uh, on the choice of uh, choice of uh, managerial influence on the on this um, states. Um, today, attempts are being made to divide the factories of the future in three main types: digital, smart, and virtual. The main task um, of the digital factory is the development of models produced using digital design and modeling. Smart factories are aimed at mass production but while maintain maximum flexibility of production. This is ensured by a high level of automation and robotics of the enterprise. Automated control system for technological and production processes are widely used. And virtual factory is an integrated structure for the design and analysis of production system, which is a network of digital and smart factories, which also includes uh, suppliers or materials, um, components, and services. Uh, a number of automated enterprise management systems are used um, in such a factory management <coughs> global so, um, supply chains and um, production assets. Um, 
the innovative enterprise therefore is a managerial uh, ma management approach focused on uh, use of new technologies for the development uh, of uh, innovative uh, enterprises. In figure uh, one, present uh, organizational um, structure of a smart innovative enterprise. It is important to note that the structure of the um, smart innovative enterprise is proposed to be based on the structure of the innovative process, since which uh, could um, which, which would uh, be managed at all stages of, it, of its organization by an integrated intelligent information management system of smart innovative enterprises. Uh, figure two present the spiral model of development of innovative enterprises. According, according uh, to the given structure, um, the components of the innovation process uh, in order to complete um, I, I1, I2, etc. Innovation cycle start and ensuring the spiral development uh, of uh, innovative enterprise where I1, I2, I3, etc. is um, our idea one, idea two, idea four, and next. Um, structure of uh, intelligent information management system of smart energy enterprise uh, is on uh, figure uh, three. Um, the task of the digital factory can uh, be performed by um, intelligent research information system, IRIS, um, computer aided design system, CAD. Um, based on the following system and uh, technologies, uh, for example, product data management, product lifecycle management, uh, uh, different uh, computer-aided design systems. Um, integrated information product management system are able to perform uh, the task for smart factories, which can um, use the following basic uh, system and technologies. Intelligent information system of technology, logical preparation of production, manufacturing requirement uh, planning, advanced planning and scheduling, manufacturing execution system, uh, supervision control and data acquisitions, uh, computer numerical control, industrial internet of things, uh, big data, other. Um, on the fig four. Um, when analyzing the obtained, obtained dynamic and static characteristic of the possibilities of um, the enterprise of uh, joint stock company concern Electron on the index uh, of sold innovative goods and uh, services, we can conclude uh, that the most likely for uh, concern Electron is an increase in sold innovative goods and services since the dynamic of characteristic uh, goods and services in uh, greater the, than the average value uh, becomes the largest uh, and um, richest static of uh, 10444. Uh, when an eye attack, okay. And uh, as conclusion, a smart innovative enterprise is a management approach focused on the use of new technologies for the development of innovation um, enterprises. As individual entrepreneur today needs new creative ideas and solutions uh, that would uh, meet uh, the uh, requirements uh, of a uh, changing world, um, the structure of um, smart innovative enterprises in proposing the basic of the structure of the innovation process uh, which would uh, be managed at uh, all the stage. Like, um, the predict the, the um, statuses of smart innovative enterprise in order to uh, further optional decisions. The most suitable models may be based on the mathematical method of the, the theory of Markovian stochastic processes using the system of uh, Chapman-Kolmogorov differential equations. 
and um, the proposed mathematical um, apparatus uh, can be developed on this basis uh, mathematical software uh, um, informational intelligent management system of smart innovative enterprises adequately describe status and uh, development of the studies study at uh, joint stock company concern Anton, and can be used in the study of um, of statuses and uh, sustainable of innovative enterprises in general um, thank you for your attention and listening thank you thank you thank you for your presentation and uh, are there any questions for our presenter yeah. <clears throat> okay, if there is no question. So thank you again for your presentation. And we thank you, thank you. Thank you. And we will uh, move on. Uh, according to the program, our next, next presenter, uh, Irina Kirichenko Dmitro Malikin, but I don't see them among our attendants here. No. Okay. Okay, let's let's make a brief uh, coffee break again until 10 50. Until 10 50. Okay. Okay, 10.50. 10.50. We have a coffee break till 10.50.
We have our next speakers. Uh, Irina Kirichenko and Dmitro Malikin. This uh, presentation, research of methods for practical education of task generation based on various difficulty levels. So please proceed with your presentation. Yeah. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. I would like to present the report on topic of research of methods for practical educational tasks generation based on various difficulty levels. Authors are Dmitry Malikin and Irina Kirichenko from Kharkiv National University of Radio Electronics. Sorry, one second. Uh, online learning offers the benefits of being able to learn at a student's own pace and having constant access at, uh, to knowledge resources. But online courses propose a static set of practical tasks. For people who can show different knowledge acquisition levels, tasks of the same level are provided to consolidate the theory. The option of user training using a set of practical tasks dynamically generated by different difficulty levels was considered. Uh, this approach can be useful for massive open online courses systems. Students' motivation is an essential element of high quality education. It can increase the chance that students would solve the task with a high level of enthusiasm. Researchers have shown that task difficulty can influence students' self-regulation. Uh, if learners are challenged with non-routine tasks at an appropriate level, their cognitive skills can also be significantly improved. A student who knows how to solve a task on a low level is more likely to solve a similar task on a higher level and more likely to be interested in such solving. An essential aspect of tasks that can influence students' motivation to engage with them is their content. Uh, personally relevant content can arouse situational interest, which in turn can lead to increased attention, sustained effort, and enjoyment. So the purpose of this research is to attempt to find an algorithm for practical task generation based on different levels of difficulty. In general, the algorithm should be able to generate sets of tasks with a specific level of difficulty, uh, given this level as an input. Suppose there is some problem T with parameters A. It is also necessary to provide the algorithm F uh, that would solve the problem. Let L be a level of difficulty, then this algorithm can be formulated like on the slide. The parameters can take different forms. For example, in simple quadratic equation, a parameter set would contain A, B, and C. Then we can say uh, that depending on the values of A, changes the difficulty of the task T. Um, it is necessary to determine the upper and lower limits for each value of set A, and also specific validations can be added for X. Um, after obtaining uh, boundary values, sets of A within these boundaries should be generated. Uh, let us introduce the notation of the scoring function S. Uh, it can be formulated in the following way, where M is a set of metrics, W is a set of corresponding weights, and N is a number of metrics. Simple examples of such metrics are the execution time or the memory amount taken to perform the task. The next step is to split the generated sets into difficulty levels. Of course, it can be done manually by the course creator, but since um, it's not clear for all tasks how it, should, how it should be done exactly, and considering a large number of sets, another approach to perform this should be used, and one of them is clustering. The parameter set can be considered as a vector of values, and these vectors should be normalized. It can be done in the following way. A score of the set also should be normalized applying the same rules. And after the normalization, the vectors can be used as an input to a specific clustering method. Um, thus, to implement the whole algorithm, the following steps should be performed. Take function and the number uh, of difficult levels as an input. Define boundaries for set values and generate sets. Filter sets that should fit for specific solutions calculate scores of sets, including minimum and maximum values, and normalize vectors of sets, pass these vectors to clustering model. 
Um, the following formula was used to find the roots of quadratic equation as an example of task. Generation of sets has been done by simply iterating through ranges for each parameter bounds. For the experiment uh, for each parameter, a range from minus 10 to 10 was used with a step equal to one. An exceptional validation for A is that it cannot be equal to zero. Since in this case, um, the equation would not be quadratic. Also, specific validation for the result of the solver was introduced. Roots should be integers. The equation can have only one root, and the root, this root can be equal to zero. Minimum and maximum scores found using execution time and memory taken metrics are shown on the table uh, with corresponding sets. Three clustering algorithms were used in the experiment. Uh, the first one is k-means. Its goal is to divide inputs into clusters in which each input belongs to the cluster with the nearest mean. The amount of sets per cluster after this method is applied is shown on the slide. Examples of sets from levels uh, 0 and 9 are shown in table. It can be seen that examples from the first level contain zeros, like the examples from the highest level. It indicates that equations with omitted parameters are comparatively easier to solve. The next clustering algorithm is agglomerative. There is a subclass of hierarchical clustering. Uh, agglomerative clustering starts uh, has each input uh, starting in its own cluster, and then pairs of clusters are merged, moving up by hierarchy. Uh, the results of the algorithm applied are shown on the slide. Examples of sets from levels 0 and 9 um, after agglomerative clustering are shown on the table. Uh, there is almost no difference between levels. The third clustering algorithm is spectral. Uh, it uses a spectrum of similarity matrix uh, of the data to perform the reduction in dimensions. Then clustering is made in fewer dimensions. Um, the results of this method are shown on the slide. And the figure shows that medium levels of difficulty levels uh, medium levels of difficulty uh, have most of tasks generated. That would be the main case when using them in real conditions because most people would probably solve uh, tasks exactly from these levels. Actual examples of parameters perceived from spectral clustering are shown on, in table. This table also contains sets from level three that contain the greatest number of task parameters. Uh, table also shows visual difference between generated difficulty levels. Level zero contains parameter sets with only one non-zero value. Level three sets contain one zero parameter and parameters in level nine are all non-zero. It shows similarities to how human can see which task is more or less difficult by a number of uh, significant values. To help understand which algorithm uh, suits better in the experiment conditions, three main characteristics were used. How many sets are in each cluster? Is the sign into one or another cluster reasonable? And algorithm disadvantages. Bar chart with the sets amount per cluster is shown on the slide. K-means and agglomerative clustering has shown similar results in the amount of sets per cluster. But agglomerative algorithm provided clusters that would not fit for real usage of it since parameters in different levels were quite random. Spectral clustering shows uh, the best result in both the number of sets per cluster and their actual content in each cluster. The disadvantage of the k-means algorithm is the difficulties uh, with the outliers and noisy data handling. Spectral algorithm has problems with a large amount of data, but it is assumed that most tasks would not have such amount. As a conclusion of the research, it can be stated that students' motivation is the key point in their self-organization and therefore the learning process. Motivation can be raised by introducing dynamic and hard enough practical tasks in education. Um, with, sorry, as a, uh, as a result of the research, an algorithm of dynamic tasks generation grouped by different levels of difficulty is proposed. With specific modifications and improvements, it can be useful for various areas of learning. The basic version of uh, the algorithm of the, the mm, sorry, the basic version of the algorithm was tested in the experiment, which has shown promising results for the simple task of quadratic equation solving. The scoring function also can be improved with machine learning algorithms. 
or it can be even implemented in a tree-like structure uh, where the final score on the parameter set is the root of the tree and the total score is calculated using child elements. Each of these child elements would have own scoring method either with single function or accumulation of different scoring functions. Another assumption for further research is that clustering can be substituted by another method involving, for example, knowledge graphs that would include more parameters to detect the actual student's progress. It can lead to a more complex implementation, but a lot easier and more comfortable usage by course creators in the future. There is the end of the presentation. Thank you for your attention. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, any questions for this board metro? Okay. Thank you very much Thank again for Thank your you. presentation. And uh, we move to our next uh, presentation in our, from our program. Uh, it is presentation by Sergei Hlamov, uh, data mining of the astronomical images by Coley Tech Software. Please proceed with your presentation. Uh, good afternoon, dear participants of the conference from the Kharkiv Hero City. Today's authors present the paper called as data mining of the astronomical images by the Coley Tech Software. The fast technological progress provokes creation of a big amount of data. There are a lot of different fields of science that use the high dimensional data sets for analysis. One of them is an astronomy. So, uh, in what way the big data sets can be fed? This data can be fed in different forms, for example, file stream, video stream, physical data saved on the different surveys, virtual observatories, on even astroplates. All this data can be received from the networks of automated ground and space-based observation systems, or even from the old astronomical achieves. For example, Pan Stars in Gavai contains two telescopes with 1.8 meter aperture. Both are equipped with the largest CCD camera, which records about one and four billion of pixels per image. Each image requires about two gigabytes of storage and exposure time will be up to one minute. So more than 10 terabytes of data are obtained every night. Also, the Large Synoptic Survey Telescope, LSST, in Chile currently is under construction. It will take images of the full sky every few nights. There will be about 200,000 of uncompressed images per year that equals more than two petabytes. When we have a lot of astronomical data, what can we do with it? There are a lot of directions of research in astronomy. Some of them are solar system objects, variable stars, asteroids, comets, near-Earth objects, satellites, and others. In one frame, there are a lot of thousands of objects. Series of frames can contain hundreds of frames. For scientific research and analysis, such big amount of data should be processed by special data preprocessing methods and data reduction models, which simplify input by reducing unnecessary information. This means that we also have the data mining problems in astronomy too. So how can we solve them? For the proper processing, we need to use all steps from the knowledge discovery in the databases process, which contains the data mining stage in it. So I want to tell you about the Colitech software, which implements all data mining steps during processing the different types of astronomical information which is fed online in automated mode. In this slide, you can see the results of frames processing by the Colitex software. There are raw frames on the left side and processed frames with alignment and centered view on the right side. Also, you can see the detected moving objects on the right side. On this slide, you can find the very brief sequence of the online processing. Images are saved from the telescope, then processed by the Colitex software in different modes, and we can get necessary results as light curves and appropriate reports. There are a lot of different types of telescopes aberrations that can cause the corrupted astronomical data. For example, diffraction rays, motion blur, vignetting, flare light, coma, and others. The data with some aberrations is unnecessary information. So the removing of it on pre-processing stage allow to increase the quality of processing and reduce the execution time. 
The pre-processing stage includes analysis of the input data and can make the decision about its quality. Some aberrations can be removed by special mathematical methods for the frames filtration, brightness equalization, and background alignment. This possibility is provided by the Colitex software that also allows to perform astrometric and photometric reduction and detect moving objects such as comets, asteroids, satellites in real time. For astrometric reduction, at first, we need to recognize pixels that are related only to the real object signal. Then software removes all unnecessary pixels from the input data set to reduce amount of the measurements for processing. After the estimation of the object's position, the software starts frames identification with the stellar catalogs. This is a very difficult procedure because these catalogs contain more than billions of objects with appropriate information about them, like metadata, including astrometric and photometric measurements. The main goal of this stage is to understand to what part of sky these frames are related. Photometric reduction includes the estimation of object's apparent brightness after each signal's amplitude. This stage is performed for all real objects in series or frame. Interframe processing is used to detect and estimate the object's trajectories. The core of Colitex software consists of preliminary objects detection based on accumulation of statistics that proportional to the signal's energy along possible object motion passes. After estimation of the object's trajectory, the software starts identification of object trajectories detected in all frames of series with the large international databases that contained information about the billions of trajectories. On this slide, you can see the processing pipeline of the Colitex software. After intra-frame processing, the classification of measurements is performed. The different classes contain measurement of objects with null, near zero, normal, and very fast apparent motion. Processing of these sets of objects is performed in parallel. This approach also reduces the execution time. Colitic has abilities for detecting very slow and very fast objects. Range of visible velocities of detected objects is from 0.7 to 40 pixels per frame. In this slide, you can see the main UI model for managing the data processing and its available controls. Also, the window with processing messages is presented. The data mining is performed in oldest mode, online data analysis system mode, uh, which allows for near real-time data processing and assigns confirmation of the most interesting objects at the night of their preliminary discovery. During pre-processing step, all unsupported and corrupted frames will be rejected. The remaining useful information in data set will be categorized into clusters with help of specified attributes. While processing pipeline starts, receiving the uh, classified feeds file, it identifies types of them, row, master frames, service row frames, dark, flat, bills, and others. And only after these actions, the data is prepared for processing. Regarding processing stage, you can find the detailed information about our developed methods in a few important publications in the journals with impact five, factor five and more. Also, the Colitex software is equipped with the modern viewer of the obtained results with the user-friendly GUI. LookSky runs independently of the main program and can be used for independent review of Colitex processing results when the main program is processing data. When observing potential hazard objects, the reaction time is critical. It can be increased by reducing the confirmation time. There is no need to wait for new observations and new nights. Often it's sufficient to have information contained in the high dimensional archives with public access. The Kalitech project is developed by enthusiasts. Kalitech has assisted in making over 1,600 discoveries of asteroids, including five near-Earth objects, 21 Trojan asteroids of Jupiter, and one Centaur. Colitech has been used in about 700,000 observations during which five comets were discovered. So, thank you for your attention. Thank you. Thank you very much. Questions, please. 
very interesting and on standard application area. Yes, thank you. Okay, thank you again. And uh, we'll move to our next speaker now. And uh, our next speaker, our next presentation is a presentation by Oleg Bisika, Vladimir Kovenko, Ilona Bogac in Olha Chorna, explaining emotional attitude through the task of image captioning. Okay, Vladimir Kovenko. I see it's present. Maybe he has some difficulties to organizing connection with internet. Може зараз перезайде? Може перезайде, так. Але він був тільки що. Є, заходять. Just a moment. Maybe he has difficult case in your trudness, because in your neighbor, he is, but in your one man, he already appears. Video. Um, greetings, everyone. Sorry, I had some internet connection issues. I'm here right now. So okay, let me okay. share my screen. Okay, so and turn on my camera. Okay, you should see me now. I yes. Guess. And I guess you also see my screen right now. Yes. Yeah, I hope so. Okay, so let's start. Uh, greetings, everyone. My name is Vladimir Kovanka. I'm a data scientist at Women and Wukmi and also a student of the first course at Wien's National Technical University. And uh, the theme of my speech for today is explaining emotional attitude through the task of image captioning. Let's start. So first of all, let's start with a brief agenda of the today's speech. Uh, first of all, speak about the contributions of the work, its description of the goal and the series that um, we wanted to prove. We will then briefly discuss the previous work review, data collection process, have an overview of pre-trained models that were used in the final model, and also speak about the additional biometric features which were used in the final approach. Then we will discuss training details and experimental results, and we'll have a brief session regarding the future work. So first of all, let's start with the contributions of the work and description of the goal and the actual theory. So um, image understanding can be uh, described as the process of interpreting regions or objects to figure out what's happening in the image and uh, understanding the special relationship to each other. And actually the statement implies that uh, the main goal and the main thing regarding the scene understanding is the capability of describing its context. We then formulate our serious faults that a model which can describe the emotional attitude based on image is capable of understanding it. In order to prove the theory, we collect a new data set of image text pairs, which we call image cup, and we spe specifically annotated in the way that it explicitly or implicitly explains the emotional flavor or emotional attitude and its causes on the image. We then solve the task of image captioning on it. So our contributions can be summarized as follows. We first of all present a new data set, uh, which is based on IMDb Wiki1, and we conduct a set of experiments on the task of image captioning based on features which are extracted from recent SOTA models. And we also show that addition of biometric features such as gender or emotions distributions improves the performance of the models. Uh, 
So let's first of all talk about the previous work. And a very relevant work to ours is the work of Nazami et al, which uh, constructed a so-called face cap model, uh, which has uh, uh, which has different folds of data as we see here on the image. So first of all, this particular model for image capturing works on the visual data, like the CNN on ImageNet is used to extract the visual features from the image, but also it uses the CNN, which is trained on infamous FAIR data set to extract uh, the actual emotion features, which are then fed into the model via both uh, concatenation with uh, some initial hidden state and with usage of attention mechanism. And they are making their experiments on uh, also a famous Flickr face 30K data set and mainly on some um, sub data set of it, which is called Flickr face 11K. In their work, they show that addition of these emotional features helps to generate the captions with a flow of some different emotions and to better describe uh, the words with emotional flavor. So the other work of Matthews et al. actually is uh, relevant to the uh, concept of uh, uh, the sentiment in the captions. And in their work, they propose a new STM a network, which actually uses two STMs and calls switch OSTM. The first OSTM network is trained on a big uh, portion of the data set, like for example, MS Coco data set. And the other one is trained on a small data set which they generated, like Centicup. And they are switching uh, during inference and during training so that uh, the smaller model can have a benefit of a bigger model to actually predict more structured uh, words uh, in caption, but the smaller has an ability to predict a captions with some uh, flavor of sentiment. So, and actually, uh, as you see on the image on the right, so here is different captions that are possible, for example, for the image with a dog, that this is a dog resting uh, on a computer desk or a white shaggy beautiful dog and so on. So actually, uh, they are able to generate captions with some flavor. So if to actually compare our work with two uh, recent works, uh, there are some changes. Actually, uh, both works like FaceCup and Centicup, they use uh, custom run architecture. So they're altering the architecture itself while we are not doing this and we are just uh, using some sort of uh, mechanism which are already in LSTM. So regarding data set size, we can see that our data set size is like on the second place in this comparison table, but actually we are not using any sort of uh, pre-training a big model on the other data sets so that our problem is much difficult because we're using limited data. So regarding pre-training embeddings, so embeddings for textual data uh, is pre-trained only in our work and regarding the pre-trained visual models, all the works uh, which I described are using it. Uh, we also added emotion feature and gender feature while face cup used only emotion feature and sent up only sentiment one. Regarding the data collection process, so in terms of data set, we looked through the many of possible ones like MS Coco, like Centicup that is already mentioned with this data set, but all of them were of really poor quality and the captions were inadequate in terms of our task. So in order to uh, prove our theory, we collected a new data set, MITCAP, which is actually a sub data set of IMDB wiki, which is annotated so that each image has one annotation. And one thing that is really interesting to note here is that first of all, we wanted to prove the theory by uh, the clustering techniques, and we wanted to make a parallel clustering of both textual and visual data, then to use some sort of uh, clustering matrix to show that clusters of visual and textual data are actually uh, have different unions and the union score is very, very big. But uh, we then stick to the process of image captioning. That's why uh, the data set is very and very noisy and has only one caption per image. But actually we can understand what this data set is like just uh, viewing the image 
uh, in the corner, in the left bottom corner, is that here you see a caption, a man is happy to see his daughter. And this is the thing we really wanted because actually this caption means that man is happy because he's seen his daughter on this particular image. So this caption uh, implicitly explains why uh, the man has such an emotional attitude in this image. Uh, the other thing about data collection process is that we also added some sentiment category, but it was added only for the better categorization of the data set. However, it can be used uh, for other sort of experiments in future work. Uh, let's start with the pretrained model solver view, mainly visual models that we were experimented with. So the first model is the ResNet, that is infamous model by Heto. Uh, also, we tried efficient net, and it was used not only in this context. And also, we tried the autoencoder uh, for visual data encoding, mainly the encoder part, this one, because autoencoder have a possibility to uh, learn the outline data structure while training to uh, reproduce the data. Uh, so regarding the actual data, we just use word -to model by Mikolov et al. And that's it. Uh, now let's speak about additional biometric features. Actually, uh, in order to create these biometric features, uh, we use three per-trained models. The first model is uh, UOS3, which is trained on one wider face data set. Actually, this model just detects faces and crops them from the image. But after that, we, for example, for this particular image, have two new samples. Uh, and in order to encode features for them, we used uh, the same model architecture, efficient net, which is trained on IMDb agenda data and per data set. As a result, we get two prediction uh, vectors, like for each model and for the sample. So, and as we see, this prediction vectors is just the probability of assignments to each class related to the model. After that, the additional biometric features are created in the in manner. So for gender features, we just uh, use the assignment, uh, the argmax assignment to the class and uh, just in the frequentist manner, construct a normalized distribution. Uh, but regarding emotional features, we just average the prediction vectors and normalize them. So some training details before we jump into the actual results is that we used uh, train validation test split. 80% of data used for training and 10 for test and validation. Uh, approaches validated with uh, the coding technique of uh, beam search with a beam size of five. Um, blue score and perplexity were used for all the experiments. And also we used the RMS prop optimizer with a learning rate of you see it on the image. And in order not to overfit, we also used loss reduction technique and trained the model with a batch size of 64 uh, for 30 epochs. So here is the uh, experimental results from the table. And I won't take on discussing the results here right now because you can read them and all the discussion in the paper. But the interesting thing is that uh, actually what worked out is uh, usage of ResNet logits. Logits is uh, the last dense wire right before softmax of any uh, neural network. Uh, this word to work embeddings and emotions and gender feature. As you can see, it gained the best results on all the splits because overall blue is actually uh, the test data. And uh, we stick with this approach for showing the actual results. Uh, before jumping into the results uh, of decoding, which are very interesting, actually, uh, first let's speak about the best architecture and how it looks like just to understand the flow. So actually, uh, if you have this particular image that is input to our network, we first of all uh, use a CNN image net to actually extract the net to extract the visual features, which are fed into the initial uh, hidden wire of OSTM and this initial hidden wire in original uh, OSTM is just like the vector of zeros. And we also use phase preprocessing technique. So with the OS3 and two CNNs that are actually uh, create those features which we already discussed and they're just concatenated with uh, the hidden state of each port in OSTM. Uh, so a very interesting thing is the effect of additional features. Here you see this bizarre image of some, I don't know, 
demon creature attacking a poor human. And the thing is that uh, the actual true caption is man was confused because he was attacked by devil. Uh, but you see here that by changing actually the vector of features, we see very different captions. And uh, the thing is that for beam uh, decoding technique, we don't see much difference because they are more uh, noise resistant than, for example, greedy approach. And for greedy approach, we see that, uh, for example, in A example, we see that man looks very, very excited. He's trying to harm the other man. And for the second example, we see that man looks very, very troubled. And for certain, we see man looks very, very troubled and because he's going to shoot somebody. Actually, uh, the very, uh, Error I think here, the thing that is very, that can actually cause errors in future is that if the process of creation of additional features is done in wrong way, the error is propagated through the whole network and can result in very poor results. Uh, so regarding the decoding results as it is, so here are like, for example, images and some things to actually discuss here is, for example, this image where beam size decoding is very poor and we see that uh, just greedy decoding is very okay. So, and also this image where uh, the greedy uh, decoding is very poor and beam size is very nice. But as, as the last image, we can see that actually both beam and greedy decoding techniques show alternative uh, captions that are also interchangeable. So that's it, I guess, uh, two words about the future work. First of all, uh, what we are planning to do is data quality by improving captions quality in each data with a Flickr 1K data set and then need more specific data also uh, for five annotations per image, add some sentiment related features and start specific OSTM architecture that will mix all the biometric features on the sentiment ones. That's it, thank you, and uh, waiting for your questions if such exist. Okay. okay, thank you, thank you. Any questions for our last presenter? Okay, this is all understood and uh, uh, thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, we uh, uh, moved our next uh, report by, uh, as I understood, uh, Yulia Polishuk will be make the presentation. Uh, the scalar metric of classification algorithm choice in machine learning problems based on the scheme of nonlinear compromises. Yes, correct. Give me a second to share my screen. Uh, can you see my screen? Not yet. Okay. Okay, I think I have some problem with that. Technical problems? I can share my screen, unfortunately. Maybe you will no. try to relog in or something and don't know. No, no. I think the problem not in, in, in not in this sphere. I don't know. Uh, can I send my presentation in chat and maybe someone can help me to present uh, the screen? Okay. Okay. Mm-hmm. 
Yeah, I'm done. Just a moment. Oh, just a moment. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, maybe I will share your screen. Thank you so much. And uh, you will tell me when you will uh, when uh, we'll need to pass to the next slide. Uh, I can ask for the um, remote control and do it by myself. Uh -huh. Or you can support just me. A moment, just a moment, just a moment. Yes, approve it. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, okay, colleagues, hello uh, one more time. My name is Yulia Polishuk. I'm a PhD student of National Aviation University, Ukraine. And the topic of my research is the scalar metric of classification algorithm choice in machine learning problems, uh, which based on the scheme of uh, nonlinear compromise and the list of authors you can see on the screen. Okay. Sorry. Uh, it is uh, well known that in IT field, machine learning methods are used to solve a number of applied problems, and these uh, methods have become widely used. Uh, normally, machine learning is a class of methods of artificial intelligence, the characteristic feature of which is not a direct solving the problem, but learning through the use of solution to many similar problems. Uh, among the exciting methods of machine learning, the most research researched and developed uh, are the methods of machine classification, which belong to the controlled uh, type of learning or learning with a teacher, or it can be called supervised learning. Uh, today, nearly all leading uh, IT companies to uh, some extent develop, use, or provide as a service various methods and algorithms of machine learning. Uh, for example, um, Microsoft Azure Machine Learning Studio has more than a dozen classification algorithms, each of uh, uh, each of which can perform the test a set task. You can see the classification of Azure uh, Machine Learning uh, Studio on the figure number one. Uh, for the classification problem, given the actual label and the predictable label, the first thing we can do is to divide our samples into four segments, uh, true positive, false positive, false negative, and true negative. Uh, and classification error matrix you can see on the table number one. Uh, according to the classical theory, several indicators or classification metrics are used to evaluate the quality of uh, such classification algorithm. Um, first uh, first uh, indicator is accuracy, it the fraction of the correct answer of the algorithm. It is a quick and informative indicator of model performs. Uh, we can re uh, rely on it alone. This matrix is uh, useless in problem with uh, unique classic. The second indicator is precision. Uh, precision is the proportion of the correct answer of the model with, uh, within the classes. Uh, the next indicator is recall. Recall is a share of true positive rate. And uh, the last but not least, uh, the F score is the harmonic mean between precision and recall. The F score is a good candidate for a formal classifier quality evaluation uh, metric. Um, the receiver operation uh, characteristic or ROC curve is used to analyze the behavior of classifiers uh, at different thresholds. Uh, it demonstrates the proportion of false positive rate compared to the proportion of true positive rate. Um, see figure two. Um, the scalar indicator that allows from this indicator and allows us to compare classifiers in the value of the area under the curve. Uh, 
A, a perfect classifier will have an area under the uh, RO secure equal to one, uh, while a random classifier will have an area of uh, 0.5. Uh, the precision recall card determines the sensitivity to the ratio of classes. If the positive class is significantly smaller, the OC curve may provide an adequate uh, estimate of the algorithm quality. The criterion of the quality of the family of algorithms is uh, the area under the PR curve. Uh, quite often when uh, using different classification algorithms, similar quality indicators are obtained and it is difficult for a user to choose one of them. This is especially true for the criteria of highest efficiency, which is calculated for each system separately and depends on business objectives. In practice, several approaches are used, each of which has advantages and of course disadvantages. We propose to apply the methods for solving multi-criterion problems with Based, which based on a non-liner scheme of compromises presented in uh, uh, work number eight. Um, the introduction of coefficients C uh, allow us to give a preference to one or another criterion being better adapted to the specific business task. Um, Uh, the uh, highest scalar value of the indicator NCS uh, will determine the best algorithm of implementing a particular classification task. The advantages of the methods of nonlinear compromise scheme are, uh, first, of all, first of all, that uh, these methods is quite simple in terms of uh, computational cost and allow us to obtain solution from the Pareto. Uh, second advantage is that the scalar uh, convulsion and the convexity of a partial criteria had the property of uh, an immodality. Moreover, the nonlinear scheme of compromises had the property of continuous adaptation to different situation in which it is necessary to accept a multi-criteria solution. Uh, to verify the efficiency and evaluate the efficiency, experiments have become conducted on the application of the uh, proposed metric together with the calculation of non uh, indicators. The experiments were conducted using Python programming language and a number of uh, its libraries, such as uh, Scikit-Learn, Pandas, and others. The Scikit-Learn library have many classification algorithms that can be used to build a machine learning model. The following learning models uh, have been created, and you can see the list on the uh, right part of the uh, slide. Uh, Skid learning uh, Python contains many built-in features for analyzing the performance of models. In this task, we use some of these metrics and have written our own quality assessment function from stretch to compare the, them with uh, known ones. Additionally, we propose our own indicators for the quality of classification algorithm nonlinear scheme of compromise. The library presented in figure number four uh, were used for uh, software development. Uh, the obtained uh, research results are presented in table number two, three, uh, and four. Uh, Send the experiments were performed for a well known data set, which was well balanced and test. The additional experiments were performed for a two, uh, two class classification of a real data set with uh, 1000 and more copies. The results obtained and summarized uh, in a table mm -hmm. number five. Analysis of the results of experiments show that in this case, we have a balanced data set of which all algorithms show high quality values close to the standards. The comparison table for the class uh, IRIS set as uh, its table number two show that if all other indicators are equal, it is possible to determine based on a single indicator's uh, accuracy, and it makes no sense to calculate the NSC. With respect to a single indicator of accuracy, the highest accuracy was found for the SVM algorithm. 
uh, analysis of table number three show that in the classification of iris versicolor, the best and uh, CS indicator is shown by the SVM algorithm. Analysis of table number four show that in the classification of iris, iris virginica, the best and CS indicator it, uh, is also shown by the SVM algorithm. For the second data set, approximately the same quality assessment results are observed for the algorithm of CART and CVM. Due to the calculation of the NSC, it is possible to reasonably determine the best algorithm, namely, namely CRT classification. Um, so in the paper we proposed for evaluating the classification quality to use the developed scalar quality indicators, which is a scalar nonlinear uh, convulsion of uh, the known quality indicators, such as accuracy, recall, precision, and so on. This indicator allows us to give a reference to one or another classification algorithm the value of typical indicators are almost the same or have contradictions. Uh, studies have confirm the usefulness of the proposed indicator NCS. In the future, it is advisable to study the scalar indicator of quality in more detail, determine its limits, and develop recommendation for the use of the NSC. Okay, um, thank, you. thank you. Thank you very much. Please ask your questions. Okay, thank you. Thank you again for your presentation. Yeah, thank you for your help. Thank you. Uh, so uh, we have our last presentation today. As it happens, it is uh, my presentation. So I will share my screen and proceed with this presentation. I hope you see my screen now. And uh, uh, the theme of my uh, talk today is, is the introduction of at attentional uh, mechanism uh, in the situational awareness process. In uh, the growing complexity of our world, we need to introduce uh, systems which uh, in artificial systems which uh, would be able to uh, read the environment and make a fast and correct decision about uh, this environment, it even takes uh, actions. However, we have a lot of challenge here in order to implement this uh, problem, this, this, uh, such technologies, be because uh, the process uh, of working for such systems is uh, essentially repeating the a cognitive process of humans. So it includes such uh, stage as perception of information, data recognition of patterns, uh, interpretation of data, making decision, acting, projecting, and a lot of, lot of, lot of uh, quite a difficult operations. Such situation of variables, uh, aware systems are very popular now. And uh, the promising solution for this problem is to use uh, a technical solution uh, geared toward a focusing mechanism, like uh, attention we have in our human awareness. In order to represent the situation awareness process, uh, a lot of models were developed. And uh, in our work, we use the GDL defic or model, or as this uh, now, name it data fusion model. Data, this model has uh, five levels. In uh, level zero is this signal feature assessment. Level one, entity assessment, that is interpretation of data. Uh, level two, situation assessment, that we detect situation. And um, uh, in level three, we have impact assessment. So we plan how our possible actions and decisions in this situation would impact uh, the board, the, our intentions. And in level four, we have performance assessment, the assessment of performance of entire situation aware systems. 
in the most of the cases uh, in uh, when we approach to model situation of resistance we use ontologies in order to perform some kind of uh, conceptual modeling uh, however in the case of situation of error systems uh, we have uh, uh, very high level of uh, change in this uh, in the world and also in uh, the ontologies and uh, in order to represent uh, support this uh, dynamic change we uh, use uh, the approach of adaptive ontologies that is the weighting of uh, ontologies elements dynamically waiting so the main purpose of our work is outline of attentional mechanism how it will be working using the gdl defic models and uh, how we uh, we also uh, aim to demonstrate how resulting attention is uh, formed from feedbacks coming from multiple levels of this model the main premises of our research we use uh, GDL defic of data fusion models as the basis uh, for representation of situation awareness process. Situation awareness process is implemented by an uh, intellectual agent, which actually perceives the environment and uh, has its own uh, conceptual knowledge base based on its own ontologies. Why its own ontologies? That is because he needs to constantly learn and change his knowledge, and also on the ontology level too, uh, using the feedback mechanism. When an intellectual agent perceives uh, perceive the environment, it forms the contextual ontology of this environment. So this. Uh, or contextual model of this environment. Uh, this contextual ontology includes the conceptual model of environment and also uh, other elements, ontological elements, uh, dependent or uh, related to this uh, model of environment, because uh, there could be different and not actually present in the environment object but uh, which uh, the agent could uh, decide as being important to uh, making decisions uh, we use graph based representation of ontology uh, based on vertices and edges and we weight every uh, vertice and edge with a corresponding weight also, we introduce uh, the fresh out of attention, th con, which uh, says which uh, elements of ontology will be taken in consideration in this state and uh, which will be ignored. ignored. So in this way, uh, our own attentional mechanism human works also because we have also uh, limited uh, computational resources in capacities available and uh, we also always select what to think of or what we will need to ignore uh, conceptual models is uh, this uh, levels uh, like uh, Working with ontology, it is uh, zero or first level of GDL model. On next level, we work, uh, second level, we work with conceptual uh, mod models. Uh, the switch on this, the system is processing uh, different conceptual models and uh, the, they form the working set of active models. Uh, each model also has an assigned weight, which also can be chained and uh, changed. And we also have the model fresh code, which assign which model are processed in the first place and uh, which are somehow put uh, off for a later date. Uh, models in the working set include task models. Task models are uh, the set of task models is dictated by intentions of uh, intellectual agents, what uh, it plans to do. Situations processing models, is models processing uh, already detected situations and model monitoring uh, the conceptual model of context for cues and events may be indicating the possible situations. Uh, threatening uh, situations so we always look for uh, possible threats and the possible situation which can happen in our environment in every moment of time 
in order to connect our uh, reasoning with uh, our experience, uh, previous experience, uh, we introduced the concept of prototypical context. Prototypical context is the similar situation, is a description of similar situation the agent was previously in. Uh, they are stored in knowledge base, and uh, in, when we are in uh, such, uh, our current context is compared to the list of prototypical situations, and we uh, recognize the similar situation or the most similar situations which can be used uh, from this prototypical context, which can be used for, um, in this uh, current situation. When uh, such prototypical context is identified, we use, use the knowledge about uh, this uh, situation. Uh, it includes the conceptual model of situation, diagnostic information containing condition and procedures needed to detect the situation, decision making, impact assessment procedures, uh, actual information, what should be done, could be done, and so on. Uh, an important part of situation environment process is the uh, protesting cues in environment situation. Uh, when we uh, it identified our prototypical context, we have automatically the set of uh, cues uh, uh, saying which situation are possible, which can happen in this situation. Each cues have also assigned weights and uh, says it says. Uh, which queues will be monitored in first uh, time uh, order and the second order. Uh, mm. The models, uh, are, mm. the used models in working set are constantly uh, evaluated and it's, their importance is uh, reassigned. And uh, when uh, such uh, some cues or some situation is uh, detected, we uh, move to the next level, the impact assessment level, the, uh, the third level of GDL model. And in this uh, level, we uh, uh, model the impact and possible consequences of our decisions. And uh, the result of this modeling also uh, includes uh, the importance of models we use on previous level. For example, if our decision, uh, our modeling set the result uh, will be neg negligible, uh, we can deprioritize uh, the model of situation or ignore this situation. Or on the other hand, is uh, even uh, some minor, uh, if uh, the analysis of impact says that uh, there would be some grave consequences of this situation, we will uh, prioritize, uh, add weight to this situation. And uh, lastly, we have the last level, the level when we monitor uh, all uh, situation awareness parameters. This is a very interesting level because the situation awareness system on this system, on this uh, last level, is uh, a situation aware system on its own right. That means when the all uh, situation aware system monitors the environment and plans how to work, how to do in this environment. Uh, this uh, this level we uh, monitor the self monitoring. We do a self monitoring. We are doing the self awareness, the self system. That is, we monitor how the parameters uh, describing the performance of the system, such as CPU load, uh, communication chain load, uh, queue length, and so on. And uh, when we have uh, feedback, when we uh, in, uh, see that our load is uh, nearing uh, uh, too high, we can change the thresholds on lower levels of uh, uh, the system. So uh, the system manages uh, is managed by feedbacks. For example, for level uh, from level four performance assessment, we can uh, say that uh, say uh, send a hint to level three. Uh, we are very uh, the load is high. Use simpler models for impact assessment. More. Uh, hard granite models here and so so also level four send uh, feedback signals uh, changing uh, 
uh, fresh oats on uh, all those levels. But we also have feedbacks coming, for example, for level three to level four by updating uh, weights uh, as a result to updating uh, to modeling impacts from level four to level one is updating the ways from uh, ignored models we don't need to reason about uh, elements which are not important so they are their importance in the ontology is uh, uh, lowered and uh, also we can uh, from level one we can send a signal to ignore the signals from some sets of uh, uh, detectors from set of sensors uh, uh, just ignore uh, some some subset of input information if we don't have enough resources. Uh, conclusion: the implementation of the mechanism uh, promises to be uh, to allow for quickly adapting to ever changing uh, change in the environment, uh, and uh, then compare it, for example, to ontology extraction or other methods of. Uh, uh, my ontology mapping, uh, the, it, uh, seem, it seems to be uh, requiring less of uh, resources here. And uh, as, as to uh, possible uh, next steps in uh, this, uh, or, or maybe unresolved problems in uh, this uh, uh, task, uh, we can talk about, uh, ask ourselves how we uh, do assign these ways in a real case scenario. And uh, in order to resolve this problem, we uh, suggest to use machine learning approaches and uh, neural networks in order to balance and uh, define the actual values uh, of uh, these uh, fresh oats and uh, weights. So uh, I thank you for your attention and uh, I ask, uh, I am waiting for your questions. I want uh, to ask uh, some one, one only one question, but uh, this is, I am not right. I'm sure I am not right, mm -hmm. but uh, uh, I know that uh, the term uh, awareness is uh, the synonym of knowledge, information, knowing, uh, which, why so, uh, why you uh, decided uh, uh, to use uh, uh, awareness? Uh, this is, uh, this is a term with a quite, a quite, a quite a long history. Mm -hmm. uh, it is uh, started uh, with uh, the, military implementation when uh, fighter pilots were required to know in every moment about uh, the foreign jets for, for, or for foreign uh, planes, uh, enemy planes uh, and uh, their movements and uh, act uh, very quickly. Uh, so it uh, not only knowledge, it is uh, uh, as uh, not only is... knowledge not only knowing and not only uh, information but uh, this uh, term is not uh, so uh, forever yeah i see uh, uh, yes but, but it, very it, it, very old yes yes very i old understood and... Mm -hmm. and, and, and this is very it very is widely used uh, just in this context like awareness uh -huh. like, like understanding what happens what happens around us what uh, uh -huh. why it happens how should we do in this situation that is uh, so it is um, thank you very much i'm satisfied it's very interesting for me thank you okay thank you thank you very much for your questions. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much. So we have come to the end of our program today. And uh, I would like to uh, listen to maybe someone has some remarks uh, about uh, our sections uh, <laughs> or some suggestions. Okay. If we Thank have you, no... Thank you, Viktorovich, very much. <laughs>
Дякую. Відео я вже... Запис я вже виключив. Так, було, було вже 